Welcome to the garage. I'm Robert, and this... Actually, you know what? It's 2019. I told you new things were coming. Let's go ahead and spin this camera around. Welcome to Hassle Cycle Works. I'm Robert, and today we're going to be working on Project Vulcan. So in one of our previous videos, and I'll put a link down in the description for you, uh, we went over dimple dies and building some gussets with dimple dies. And we're going to be using that today on Project Vulcan to hide the battery and to give us a place to mount and hide the electronics. Let me give you a better view of the bike. So here's what we're working with right now. We've got all these electronics, the CDI, all the nanny state stuff, the flasher relay, the ground, all that. And then we also have to have a spot to mount our battery. So my goal today in this episode is to build a gusset that runs from this bar to this bar, has some dimple die holes in it to add a little more rigidity to this and it will kind of complete this corner and then that'll give us a spot that's going to be hidden for our battery and then we're also going to clean this up we're going to get this all ground back smooth i'm going to make a nice butterfly shaped like a butterfly stitch shaped piece that go here to tighten this all up and get rid of this nasty bit and then what we're going to do is I'm going to take all these control boxes and there's a few of them and we're going to lay them out on some paper we're going to see just how big they are and how much space we have to work with back here and see if we can't mount all those electronics down here just above the swing arm out of the range of the movement of the swing arm and then we're going to build a gusset to go from here to here and on the other side as well and then I'd like to do some sort of maybe stainless or just regular expanded steel mesh to go over that so that we still have airflow for things like our our CDI and our voltage regulators that do get hot that'll give them the cooling they need but still hide them because God knows this stuff is ugly so yeah let's go ahead and get ready to start cracking on that I'm going to disconnect all these boxes and get some cardboard or heavy stock paper and we're gonna trace these out and see just how big of a plate we're gonna have to make to mount all this and uh, I'll bring you back once I'm set up and ready to go all right so I just measured the frame on the bike and unfortunately we're not gonna be able to go with a rectangle piece there's actually a taper to the sides so what we'll have to do is measure our narrow side and our wide side get our depth right and then I'm going to use a straight edge and cut that out and we'll place it in between the frame rails on the bike just to make sure it's gonna work we don't want to buy any sheet metal or anything at this point and then come to find out we were incorrect on our measurements so that can lead to be an expensive mistake so we don't want to do that so we'll go ahead and measure like three or four times We'll offer our template up to the bike, make sure it's going to fit. It may not. We might have to come up with something else to do with all this. Try to stack this stuff up and line it up so that we can use that particular space on the bike and install all of this stuff. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and measure that all out and cut this. And then we'll take it to the bike and see if it fits. So 
So I've gone ahead and cut out my piece of cardboard and now let's take it over to the bike and make sure it fits. So we're just gonna move this wiring harness out of the way. Stop. Let's offer up our uh, template here. You can kind of see what I'm going for. Um, that coil, I'm actually going to make another bar or a set of tabs that will come off of. Hopefully you can see this, but hopefully um, you can. But I want to make a set of tabs that come off of this cross brace here that that coil will amount to and keep that out of the way. So it looks like. Um, our cardboard plate's gonna work. And that gives us plenty of room between the swing arm movement and the plate. And what I may do, just to make it look real clean, is once we get it cut out and we lay our components out and everything, I may notch this for the tire, just to give it that finished look. Um, so, all right, let's take it back to the bench and see if we can get all of our components to mount to this. What I want to do, just to make sure that we don't get confused, is I'm going to draw a line and an arrow and label it front so that we know that that's the front of the bike and that this is the top. Okay? Alright, now it's just a matter of See if we can fit all these components on there. Now the wiring harness does come from the front of the bike to the rear. So we do want all our connectors pointing towards the front. So I'm going to switch over to the other camera and this will probably be a time lapse. All right, so we were successful in mapping out all our components on our plate with one exception. The voltage regulator rectifier, as you can see, it's just not going to fit. So we could mount it on the bottom of the plate, uh, but then that's going to probably cause some interference issues with our swing arm. What I'm thinking about doing is when I go to mount that butterfly gusset between the two frame rails is I will mount this there and I think that's probably going to be a better option so I'll paint this black and we'll weld some studs to that gusset once we get it made and then we can just simply put two lock nuts over this and that will lock it in place there's going to be more airflow in that location on the bike so I think the next thing we need to do is figure out if our battery is going to work. I think that's going to work pretty well actually. Um, we just make a gusset that runs from about here on the frame up to here. I think that'll work. So what we need to do now is come up with some sort of mounting system. for the battery. We do not want it to come past this back frame though. We don't want to see that. We don't want it sticking out way back here because then it, there's more of a chance of it hitting the tire. So we want it to be forward a little bit and we can plate that off so that we don't see the battery or maybe use some more of that mesh I was talking about. So what I'm going to do now is get our steel together and start building a template to make a mount for our battery. I'm going to get the steel to make this and I think there's a couple spots where we might be able to do some dimple dyed holes on this plate so we can strengthen this up but I'm going to go ahead and trace this onto a piece of sheet metal 
get it cut out and make sure it fits. So after a little bit more CAD work, <laughs> um, we now have the gusset templates that will go between the frame of the bike and plate that we just made with the dimple dies that the electronics will mount to. I'll show you where these go. The piece that I showed you that I made out of the cardboard is actually going to go between this tube and this tube, and it's gonna come up high enough to cover the electronics and then the goal is to weld some little tabs to those gussets and then we're going to make a plate that will go and sit across the electronics and that will be out of some sort of uh, perforated stainless that will then bolt into those tabs that we're going to weld to these gussets and it'll cover this up and this guy has some of the wiring and these boxes Keep it somewhat protected. It won't keep water away, which is fine because these were all exposed before. So no big deal there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is take those cardboard templates that we just cut out. I'm going to trace them onto some sheet metal. I'm going to trace one out and I did check to make sure that this fits on both sides of the bike and it fits pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and get that done off camera and bring you back once they're done. Probably go ahead and pop the holes in it for the dimple dies and dimple die those. Dimple dyed, edges all cleaned up. Um, I also went ahead and made some little tabs. The purpose of the tabs is to be welded here and here. And then each one of those tabs, I'm going to weld one of these stainless nuts on. And then using the stainless, the perforated stainless, using that, and then some of this eighth inch thick by three quarter, I will create a border that will go around this perforated stainless. We'll pop a couple holes in it and then these bolts will run through those holes and into the nuts that will be captured on the back of the tab. So hopefully that makes sense. What it's going to end up doing is providing us a good cover and once it gets painted or powder coated, I haven't quite decided yet, uh, probably be black to kind of subdue it. Um, it's going to cover our electronics and kind of mask them enough that you can't really see them unless you look straight down, but provide ventilation.
as you can see I just tacked in our dimple dyed panels that we made on both sides so now what I need to do is take our flat stock and build our border and then once that's done then we can cut our expanded stainless steel mesh down and that will make our cover for our electronics. Okay guys, um, had a little hiccup, a little bump in the road with custom stuff. It's always bound to happen. Um, made our little tabs, hopefully you can see those, for our coil to mount to the cross tube on the frame on the Vulcan. And those are pretty much done. So what I need to do is just go ahead and weld them to that tube and bolt the coil in place. Um, problem is, I'm not happy with the position that I picked for the battery. And if you remember, we were going to try to fit it in here. Um, it'll fit. Uh, I can cover most of it up. The problem is, I just didn't care for it. Uh, we're taking a lot of weight off this bike, trying to thin it down some because it was a cruiser. And now we're going with that cafe style kind of build. Um, so the weight I am taking off, I don't want to upset that by adding a battery at the highest point on the bike. I want this thing to be nimble. I do want to be able to flick it back and forth to get that sporty kind of cafe feel. And I think if I take something that was low, kind of mounted in the frame, even though this battery is way lighter than the original, but if I take it from where it was down here and I lift it up and put it in here, I think that might throw us off. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board on that. I'm sorry guys. Um, that and the video um, cutting out a lot of boring parts. And I'm doing some time lapse and some fast forward stuff to keep you guys interested and keep it as short as possible. But the video is starting to get to that length where I think I'm going to start losing people. And they're not going to finish watching the video or they're going to fast through fast forward through and kind of miss on something so I'm gonna go ahead and call this episode or this part of the episode done um, we're gonna to have to split this up into two parts so what I'll do is I'll, I'll go back to the drawing board on the battery situation and um, come up with a better idea and once I do then that'll be part two and you can see the coil will be mounted and welded in place and we'll also take care of this guy here build our new gusset for there and get this all cleaned up and our gussets here because I still want to gusset this even though the battery may not go here I still want to gusset this up and um, yeah so part two will actually finish the electronics on this portion of the bike and get the whole back end really kind of button up I um, got a few little odds and ends done or left for the bike in the back um, nothing major but yeah again I apologize guys I thought I was gonna be able to knock this all out in one one episode but unfortunately it doesn't look like that's gonna happen so um, bear with me and stay tuned for the second part of this the second half of this video or the second half of this episode and uh, we'll get through it yeah but like I said you know, if you do any custom work, you, you know, you get thrown some curveballs sometimes. So, um, and actually, I need y'all's help. Two, two questions that I kind of want y'all's feedback on down in the comments. One, battery location. Where else on this bad boy do you think we could get away with putting the battery? I mean, we might have to go back to the original idea. I, I just don't like it. And if you guys can help me come up with a better idea, that'd be great. Second question. 
Um, had some comments about the rear shocks and how they're uh, a gold anodized color, um, but there's no other gold anodizing on the bike. So I plan on anodizing the front fork lowers. I think that'll be pretty sweet. Maybe a couple other little bits here and there. Um, and I know I've said before, I'm not a very artistic guy. That's why I need y'all's help. What do you think I should do as far as color scheme goes? There's no real fender to speak of. The only real paint is going to be on the tank. So what color, um, what kind of graphics or anything at all should I put on there? Um, and what about the frame? What color do you think I should go with on the frame? I have actually been tossing around the idea, no bear with me, um, a red frame, right? Man, I look fat on camera. <laughs> but a red frame with maybe a white tank with black and red race stripes or something like that. And then, of course, the red highlights that we've already powder coated and the gold anodizing on the front forks and the rear shocks but wheel color uh, tank color and scheme frame color any kind of feedback you guys can give me uh, any suggestions uh, if we get enough suggestions maybe we put it to a vote and you guys decide which way we go yeah i appreciate the feedback and the comments and the suggestions uh, i need them guys especially on that battery and of course the color combo so um, who knows? Maybe when we get this done, maybe one of you guys will suggest something that we go with and maybe you'll be the one that ends up buying this bike. Think about it as if it were going to be your bike. What would you want it to be? So again, guys, I apologize. Sorry, we're going to break this up. So until next time, guys, get up, get out there and do it.